uh, India has a long-term plan to build up the uh, semiconductor business in your country. Why and what are you thinking? Three things. First is electronics manufacturing, which was practically negligible 10 years back, is today a significantly large industry, $87 billion. Um, this iPhone 14 that you see is made in India. The <coughs> supply chain is shifting to the country. Um, sector after sector, we are getting from import substitution to export-led growth. So telecom equipment, three years from now, India will be a large telecom equipment exporter. The, all the pieces are well set. Development is very good. A couple of companies have already ex started exporting to countries like U.S. So a very large market which requires semiconductor as the basic raw material, item one. Item two, a very competitive talent pool, good talent pool, about 52,000 semiconductor engineers working in the country. And almost all of them are working from legacy nodes to the cutting edge to the SOC, getting the uh, absolutely new optimization in power consumption, all kind of stuff. The latest and really some of the leading edge technologies our people are working, our talent is working. That as the second factor. Third factor, our university system, which is producing about 500,000 engineers every year. We have tailored our project, our, our entire plan, to make sure that this university system generates a significantly large number of talent. And we have committed to develop 85,000 talent over the next 10 years. And within the one year of our announcement of our policy, we announced the policy on 1st January of 2022. By now, we have already tied up with 60 universities. We have changed the course curriculum. So all these factors together make it very natural that India should Indeed. be the and, destination for semiconductor. And, and how about financing? How, uh, how much money is the government putting behind this effort? Government is putting $10 billion. Um, that is just the first tranche. And uh, we fully understand that this is not something which can be done in a quarter or a two or a year. This is a long haul. This will require a lot of persistence. This will require lots and lots of effort. And I thank friends like Pat who are guiding us in this journey. And we have listened to the industry when we announced the uh, scheme on 1st Jan 2022. Uh, Pat and many others gave us the inputs that the demand for higher nodes which go into electric vehicles in Volvo, in the train sets, in practically all the telecom equipment, in power electronics, all those sectors require nodes which are higher nodes. So we changed our policy in October, huh. opened it up further, so very and no flexible. One, no one has said, no one in, in the Indian government has said, hey, wait a minute, why are we investing these billions of dollars in the middle of a glut? As uh, Pat very clearly said, this kind of ups and downs have been seen in this industry for quite some time. As uh, Volvo, what, 4,000 uh, semiconductors in a truck, in an EV, uh, in a train set, that number is close to 12,000. And in train set, we are, uh, we are right on track to become a major exporter in the coming three years. So the yeah. demand is going to be huge. You're so, not worried about that. You have no, no doubt about absolutely the, not. the yeah. demand. I had one more point here. It took 60 years for the semiconductor industry to grow to $550, $600 billion. It's going to be $1 trillion in the next six years. So that's the kind of growth which is happening in this it's industry. It's going to double in six years. Yeah. By so, the end of 2030, $1 trillion we cross is the expectation of most analysts at this so, point. So there's mm. enough for everybody. <laughs> Are you yeah. well, Netherlands I... is small. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need, do need a lot of chips. <laughs> so another piece would be uh, green manufacturing. Uh, semiconductor manufacturing will become, uh, uh, will also be affected by the green discourse we have everywhere. So we in India are very clear that whatever new plants, new fabs that we uh, set up, will be served with green energy, will be serviced by green energy. We already have 42% of our energy uh, from green sources, from renewable sources, and we do want to uh, add that advantage to the semiconductor manufacturing yeah. also. We have actually addressed that in our policy. Uh, that's a very valid point. Uh, close to half the total demand is from the mature nodes. So, exactly. uh, so in our case in, ca in the case of India, 
Our entire policy supports mature nodes as well as advanced. We think we'll start with the mature nodes. And there's another innovation which is happening and which is where the design capabilities really come to play in, as Pat said. Um, for example, in a car, if there are like uh, 200 uh, chips going in, wouldn't it be more economical to design a system which has probably three or four chips, which is able to make sure that the uh, glass goes up and down uh, on time, make sure that the speed governor is properly in place. So that kind of innovation is also going to come back. If Absolutely. Like fully agree. And that is where new kind of uh, innovations which come. For example, I wouldn't be surprised if in three years from now, we see a car operating system, automobile operating system, which basically make sure that all the chips manufactured by different people for different functions, they are basically able to speak to each other in a very seamless way. So those kind of innovations are also part of the significant... We're doing that, Ashwin. I think trusted long-term partnerships would be a very important factor in success going forward uh, in terms of supply chain uh, resilience, in, sub in terms of innovations in products that we bring in, in terms of uh, what do you do when uh, things go wrong in some part of the world, can you really rely? So in those things, uh, in all those matters, trusted long-term uh, agreements would be very, very critical. I think collaboration is the theme of this year's Davos. You got it right this time.